Uh, we are three miles from the runway, and I can't see it right now. I can just make out the lights. I don't know if you guys can. Right there's the runway light. So, so much for 10 nautical miles of visibility, right? here and welcome to a beautiful morning at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. You can see the sun is just starting to come up here um, and it just looks absolutely beautiful especially uh, on those scattered clouds there. Um, this is just a random flight. I had some time this morning. I wanted to get a flight in and I wanted you guys to join me for it. So I hope that uh, you'll enjoy this one. We're going to go through things a little bit quicker this morning. Um, I'm still trying to get in the habit of doing things a little faster, maybe talking just a little bit less, which I'm sure there are plenty of you who will appreciate that. So with that said, our flight today is going to be from Phoenix Sky Harbor out to Burbank or Bob Hope Airport in Burbank. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, our frame rates hold out a little bit better when we get into the uh, general LA area because uh, last time we flew in there it was a little bit choppy so we'll see how it goes um, and with that and without further ado what do you say we climb up in the flight deck and get to work and welcome to the flight deck uh, as always let's uh, start out by taking a quick look at our flight plan for the day uh, it's a pretty short flight from here to Burbank if we take a look at our operational flight plan, you'll see it's uh, just 390 nautical miles through the air. This is going to be Southwest Airlines Flight 4123, which is a normal scheduled service. And I did try to get it uh, pretty close to the time that it actually departs. Um, so that's sort of the plan for today. Um, <clears throat> if we take a look here, our block fuel is 11,779 pounds. There's only 2,500 pounds in the airplane. We are going to actually fuel it up using... Uh, the uh, hold on <coughs> man just a random cough in your face there <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> we're gonna fill it up using the uh, built-in pmdg fueling you'll see what i'm talking about um flight today is going to be runway seven left keens to harbor uh out out to fred and then thorn three and then into burbank from there uh, and then taking a look real quick, again, our off time should be about 6.45 local time, 13.45 Zulu. We're going to try and uh, get pretty close to that. And then uh, 149 packs on board. I think the aircraft actually only holds 148, so we'll go with max number of packs. Uh, 8.4 thousand pounds of cargo with a uh, total payload of 34,500 pounds. Zero fuel weight is 118,600 pounds. And again... Uh, Fuel is 11,800 with our uh, takeoff weight being 129,900 pounds and our landing weight being approximately 123,700 pounds. So taking a look at our load sheet, a lot of that same information on there, payload, zero fuel weight, etc. And so that we'll, um, we'll just uh, dive into those when we get into the FMC, start getting things set up and get rocking and rolling. Uh, and that is your, oh, you know what, I'm going to do this just a little bit different here. I'm going to jump over to Navigraph. Uh, let's get that out of the way. You can see I was getting some things set up here. Uh, so here we are, we're at gate D4. That is the gate that this is uh, supposed, that this flight is supposed to depart from. I'm going to give you your taxi brief right now. Our ATIS is going to be on 127.575, uh, clearance on 18.1, and ground for us we're on the south side, so it would be 132.55. And 120.9 would be the tower frequency. Uh, and then there's a lot of departure frequencies there, but they usually hand you off to those. When we push back, we're going to scoot all the way over here to Echo, and we're going to take Echo as our taxiway all the way down to hold short of runway 7 left. Now that takes care of our uh, flight briefing for the day and our taxi brief. Now let's get the aircraft set up and get rolling. Alrighty folks, welcome to the flight deck here. The first thing we want to do is start getting our fuel taken care of um, and get it ready to start loading our baggage and our packs. Now we're going to do that through the FS Actions ground services menu today. 
and uh, you can see that I've already got the fuel truck here I've requested that because the fuel truck is here it does not allow me to have the baggage carts here so the loaders are there but the carts are not um, I could try requesting them in fact I will but it'll probably put them on hold until yes yeah, the arrival hold that might be waiting on this one but either way uh, let's start getting our fuel loaded first so our fuel uh, target today it's, it's not 2,500. <laughs> Our fuel target is going to be uh, 11,779 pounds. And it's going to take a minute to load to, to fill up this fuel. But you see that once it's above the 2,500, it lets me start fueling. So we click on start, and you see this number immediately starts going up. Uh, our, our um, yeah, see, it's still, well, it's still arriving. But either way, uh, we're going to need in the uh, forward load, uh, the forward uh cargo area is going to be 3,300 pounds of fuel and this is going to put our uh, zero fuel weight this would put our zero fuel weight uh, oh that's because it goes here there we go <laughs> I don't know why I clicked on the start uh, to get our zero fuel weight with a uh, full load of packs it's uh, 2,300 in the aft and 3,300 in the front so we got both of those there so you see this one's here now so we can start loading that one but this one's still on hold and it's probably because of the um, uh, uh, fueler is there so we're gonna have to come back and check on that but we're not gonna sit here and stare at it all day um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at let's get this to the menu here uh, and then just taking a look at uh, our uh, cockpit acceptance uh, preparation all that stuff so we've obviously taken care of the flight plan uh, we're setting the passenger and cargo weights right now same thing with the fuel has been ordered and calculated the uh, weather briefing uh, we, di we didn't go over a weather briefing. It's going to be headwinds the whole way, but other than that, uh, the weather doesn't look too bad between here and there. Uh, the exterior inspection is complete. The fuel, uh, we're waiting for that to be loaded and verified. We do need to set the parking brake. I don't know why it loads in without it set, but there the parking brake is now set. Uh, and just going down the list here, the battery's already on. Uh, the electric hydraulic pumps are in the off position. Landing gear levers down. Start levers are uh, in the cutoff position. Uh, overhead fuel valve lights should be illuminated. That's these guys up here. They obviously are. Uh, and we're going to be changing things up here pretty soon anyway. We are on ground power right now. We're going to stay on that for a little bit. And uh, fire warning systems, that's the thing. Um, I always forget to test those when we come in here. So let's do those real quick. It's very simple. Uh, left click. So it lights up. And if you just leave it, it'll turn itself off here in a second. Same thing. This one's going to make some noise. There we go. And that one will turn itself off too, but it takes forever. So we'll do that one. And then this one here. That takes care of our uh, fire test. Emergency exits are armed. The signs can be on at this point. And we're pretty much just going to start rolling through things here. We're not going to start the APU, the APU yet. The yaw dampers are on. We're going to leave all the fuel pumps off for the moment. Uh, standby power is in the on position. We are currently on the ground power bus. Uh, we got our signs on. We get the attendants a call. That's what I forgot to do. We got to load passengers, don't we? So we'll go back down here real quick. We can go ahead. And Technically, I don't think they'll load the passengers while they're fueling the aircraft, but it is going to take a minute to fuel here, as you can see. So um, we'll go ahead and just start loading them. So we're going to do a full load, 148 packs. That's our target. And we can, we're just going to start boarding on. That may not be the right way to do it. I don't know. Somebody tell me if you know. And this one's ready. On, this one's not ready to go yet. That's the one I was thinking of. So we'll leave that there so that I don't forget about it. And we're going to press on here. Uh, we're not ready to turn fuel pumps on yet. Cabin utilities are on. IFE passengers are on. Uh, electrical panel's good. We need to get window heat on. Probe heat stays off. So these guys come on. These guys are going to come on now. Uh, probe heat can stay off for the moment. As somebody pointed out to me, a good friend of mine, uh, Honda Jet is the name he goes by on YouTube. He pointed out that uh, these these are the lights for the doors. There's the forward entry, forward cargo, aft cargo. I'm always checking somewhere else for the doors, but I've got lights right here that for whatever reason, as many times as I've flown this aircraft, I never notice those lights. So <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Um, not 100% certain on our altitude for the day. Um, so what I'm going to do now, we're pretty much set up. That takes care of setting everything up uh, for the overhead and our initial cockpit acceptance. So I'm going to break away for just a second. 
uh, and work on uh, getting those packs and stuff loaded and then we're going to come back we're going to finish uh, setting up the FMC the main panel and then we're going to be ready to push and start okay if I could just make a suggestion for PMDG um, we need to speed up the uh, the speed at which the carts and the fuel truck and things like that move around I mean they're driving like three miles an hour <laughs> they are so slow but in reality anybody who's worked at an airport knows those guys fly around the airport like a bunch of maniacs um, so if you know if, for a future update PMDG if you could please speed those up I literally for to get the fuel truck to leave and the forward baggage cart to attach was almost four minutes like that's just crazy that's so slow so uh, just a suggestion there if we could speed that up let's take care of setting up our FMC for our flight plan today uh, position initialization we could put the reference airport in here let's see if it takes the gate uh, I'm gonna put both in there and then we're at gate D4 so let's see if it takes it last time I tried to put a gate in it wouldn't take it yeah not in database doesn't surprise me I don't know why that is but if we go over to our route page here uh, we need to clear out Phoenix or it's gonna, I don't know why it does that uh, and then I've got the route saved in the folder here I probably need to clean this folder out a little bit now but there it is right there 320 nautical miles it says and then we request the routes pretty uh, straightforward stuff there you guys have all seen this before now we just have to wait it's a little slow on the request I suppose it's uh, simulating an uplink to uh, the company uh, um, you know database or whatever so but there it is it finally showed up load it in there now we gotta wait for it to upload <laughs> clear that message out uh, and what do we say this flight number was it is Southwest 4123 uh, oh there we go activate execute and then we'll put that in there Southwest Airlines 4123 4123 there we go and uh, then we can go, so this is just the basics, right? There's only a couple of waypoints in there. Go over to our performance initialization. And we know that our zero fuel weight, I need, uh, where's my load sheet? There it is. Zero fuel weight was 118.6, 118.6. So obviously you can just request the data. I'm not doing that in this case. Uh, our reserve is supposed to be 2.2 on this one. Cost index was... 117 I didn't notice that so guess what that's what we're flying today uh, flight level is going to be 380 there we go and then execute that so instead of doing the performance request I just put it all in there myself uh, we're not going to do anything with this over to the N1 limit um, we're heavy enough I think I'm going to I don't think we actually need there's a proper way to calculate this everybody knows that um, but it's different for every aircraft uh, in so much so in fact it's different for a 737 700 versus 737 800 versus 737 max or a319 a320 uh, a320 neo depends on the engine option so on and so forth so every aircraft has has its own uh, you know individual takeoff calculations for this stuff here um, and I I don't have I don't have all of that available. Um, I probably have it somewhere because it probably comes with the uh, with the manuals, but I, I'm just not doing that. So <laughs> we're guessing and we're going with that. But we have we are taking the longest runway, so we should be fine. It's gonna be flaps five. Uh, center of gravity. I didn't calculate that myself. Uh, and then we need to do our departure, which we said is going to be the Keens two. So it's gonna be the Keens two departure. Uh, transition at harbor runway seven left we can execute that and then while we're here let's go ahead and take care of that arrival because it's not a very long flight so it's the thorn three arrival uh, let's find that thorn three and let me just double check our transition is going to be indeed at Fred so we'll take Fred and then we're not going to plan our uh, runway until we get closer <clears throat> quick look at our legs page uh, just make sure we don't have any discontinuities in here we shouldn't uh, and then vectors there because that's the end of our arrival and then we should be setting up for an approach at that point so uh, back to our takeoff page can be 127 128 134 for our V speeds and that takes care of setting up the FMC I'll be back momentarily and we will set up the uh, um, MCP there we go that's what I was looking for all right, with the FMC setup complete then, uh, we'll push on here. Let's get our flight directors on. Um, 
I did not check for altitude restrictions. Not the right thing to do there. Do we have any altitude restrictions on our way out? Uh, only at or above restrictions. We don't have any minimum restrictions. So with that in mind, we can just put this up to 380. A little trick I learned if you don't want to sit here scrolling this. Click and hold and turn it. See how much faster it goes? I'm just holding the left mouse button. I just learned that today. I wonder if somebody else already knew that. I'm sure one of you did. You guys, you guys know a lot, of, a lot more than I do. <laughs> 134 is our V2, so this can be 144. I like to go V2 plus 10. So 144 on there. Flight directors are on. LNAV, VNAV can both be armed. Let's go ahead and get that APU started up. We'll jump up here to do that. Um, I believe it's the aft, left aft fuel pump, but we're going to put them all on anyway because we're going to go right to engine start not long after this. So start the APU, get the anti-collision lights on. This needs to go 380. Could have set this up earlier, but we didn't. Uh, we hadn't decided on our altitude yet. I could have looked on the flight plan. It's on there, but uh, 380, not 385. And then it's uh, 700 and like 70 feet uh, is... Um, the altitude at Burbank. So now we're just waiting for the APU to finish starting up. We'll jump over onto the APU bus and the APU bleed and we'll pretty much be ready to push and start at that point. So once this comes back down and gets down around four, uh, that's when you'll see this light in the center come up and then we can go onto the APU bus. We can dismiss ground power and we can press on from there. It is, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little slow to do it. it takes a minute. Let the attendant know. I've already disconnected the jetway. We're pretty much ready for pushback at this point. There you go. On to whoops, wrong way. On to the APU bus. There we go. APU bleed can come on. Engine bleeds can go off. I like to put that on auto, but I believe the checklist says it's supposed to be on open. I think we'll be all right. Uh, and that takes care of that. So what I'm going to do here, we're pretty much, we're well, not pretty much. We're ready to push back. Well, we do have one more thing we need to do. We need the ATIS. No, we haven't pulled the ATIS yet. So let me. Uh, just double check that frequency is 127.575. We can roll down here, and I'm probably going to sneeze in here in a second. <laughs> I can feel it coming. I tried to help hold that one back a little bit. See, you guys get a little bit of everything. Uh, it's 575, not 775. Uh, excuse me for sneezing there. <laughs> okay, 575, come on. You could probably do the same thing to scroll this one, but it's too late now. Uh, and then it was 127. There we go. Let's listen to the ATIS real quick. Sky Harbor Airport information, Golf 7 right, ILS runway 7 left, and ILS runway 8 in use. Okay, fantastic. We, we know right, what we need to know left. now. We're ready to push and start. I'll be back in just a second make sure uh, my track iron and all that's set up, and then we're going to actually do the push and start. Okay, you guys tell me because you're going to know better than I'll know. Um, for the this pushback toolbar, I've heard that this might be pretty hard on your frame rates. Um, if that's true, let me know down in the comments. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do away with it. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and request it. Cockpit to ground. This and, uh, ground. Let's Stand get rid of the by. chocks here. They always say standby. Uh, remove the chocks. We've already got the brakes set, so we're good there. Um, and then go there, there, there we go. Double check. Uh, we got to go up here anyway. Doors are closed. I can tell by looking at my lights here. Thank you, Honda Jet. Appreciate it. Uh, and then our packs are going to have to go off because we're going to be starting the engines here momentarily. We're going to go with the left ignition, and then we'll be starting with the right engine if these guys are ever ready to push back. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed, and all ground equipment is removed. The parking brakes are set. You may lift. So just as a little parking note, set. <coughs> the aircraft. Um, if that front door, that front left door is open, and you opened it manually, we are cleared for start and push. They do not close okay, it for you. Okay, cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. There we go. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. 
<laughs> I think it's funny the way he says that. <laughs> okay, go to ground. Uh, the packs are already off. Now we're just looking for 25 on the end, too. <coughs> Just me as the start really seem kind of slow. <laughs> it seems a little slow, right? There's 25. Go and bring in the fuel, and the engine will fire up. And I'm going to go ahead and do uh, engine number one as well, finish the pushback, and then we will come back on here and taxi out. Let me know in the comments if you want to see the start of both engines. Okay, engine start is complete. Now uh, we're going to take care of the last little bit of business here. Uh, the the uh, auto brakes go to RTO. I don't know if you guys know this, but if you uh, move the trim when the flaps are up, it moves at one speed, and then we got to go to flaps five anyway. So if you move the trim when the flaps are down, it goes much faster. <laughs> so we need to be six and a half and change. Uh, you probably can't see that, right? So uh, we're almost to six. So we're going to be right about there. That looks pretty good for the trim. Uh, what else here? Uh, we can. I'm going to arm the auto throttle now. Obviously, we're not going to be using it while we taxi out. And then in keeping with uh, doing things just a little bit quicker and a little bit faster, let's take care of this departure briefing really quick. Uh, it is going to be the Keens 2 RNAV departure for us today. And because we're using runway 7 left, we're going to be making this fun little loop here. So it's out to FUTEP, AZ, CRD, whatever that is, uh, U USI, USI. Uh, massive. This was the only altitude restriction on here. So max 220 knots at or above. Excuse me, hiccup there at or above 7,000. Oakley, Wulco, Keens, Ezo, and then out to Harbor for us here. Um, nothing else we really need to go over on this. There's the narrative form right here. The main thing's going to be uh, maintaining 220 or well, max 220. So 220 or less when we get out here to uh, Massive. We should have no problem being at or above 7,000 feet. Let's get that back over there. Uh, I just got to pop a couple things up on the other screen here. Uh, yeah. Those are for uh, video recording purposes. Um, okay, what else we got here? So we've done the push and start. Just taking a look at our checklist real quick here. Oh, I didn't turn the other engine generator on yet. So we need to get the other engine generator on. That's why you have a checklist, right? Make sure you don't forget things. Let's get the packs on because passengers, I mean, this is Arizona, right? So they're probably not having a good time back there. Uh, engine bleeds can come on. Now we are uh, on the bus. Wing lights can come on. We don't need logo lights. We don't really need wheel well lights. Uh, APU can go off at this point. Taxi light can come on. Pedo heat can come on as well. It takes care of the overhead there. Uh, and then just looking at the checklist real quick. So engine generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice is as required, engine bleeds are on, packs are set to auto, isolation valve is also set to auto, APU bleed is off, APU switch is off, external lights are set as required, master caution light is off, recall, nothing comes up. That means we are ready to taxi. So let me get to the proper taxi view here. Track eye are coming on, a little jump for you, maybe tiny little jump and then of course we got to center it because why not right and let's get those brakes off and let's start taxiing and I will either uh, fast forward the taxi for you just for the heck of it or I'll break away and I'll see when I get holding short of the runway I'll decide when I edit the video All right, holding short of the runway then, uh, for some reason I'm getting those generic plane models, but I have it turned off, so I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if you noticed that World Travel Airlines in there. Uh, taking a look at our before takeoff checklist, the master caution light is off. We do need to check the recall really quick. There we have it. Uh, flight controls, we didn't check those. Um, I usually, you know, sometimes I'll check them during taxi, but there you go. Full left, full right all the way up, all the way down, and then the rudder full left, and the rudder full right, and there we go, that takes care of the flight controls check. We do need to get our lights on here, we'll go ahead and flip those on, runway turn off lights can come on, taxi lights can go off. Uh, engine start switches are supposed to go to continuous, those guys can go right there, I'm not even looking at the checklist at the moment here. Uh, lights are looking good, going back to the checklist, trim is checked and set, flight directors are on, 
uh, takeoff briefing is complete that so the there's a right way to do a takeoff briefing it has to do with v1 rotate uh, you know if we have any warnings cautions things like that I've been looking to see if one of you has a good example of a takeoff briefing that you could send to me I'd really appreciate it uh, strobe lights are on, wing lights are on, landing lights are on, runway turnoff lights are on, engine start switches are continuous, auto throttle is on, transponder, T-A-R-A. I did do the transponder check or test, uh, but I did not do it on screen. My bad. If you guys want me to do that on screen, let me know. Turn the traffic button on there. Get over here to the proper view that I've been moving all over the place. <coughs> uh, come on. There we go. And then track are coming back on and getting recentered and close enough we didn't even put the brakes on let's go and get out here i don't see any traffic coming in i see nothing in the air i see nothing on the uh, tcas let's get out on the runway and roll straight into our takeoff that's the fun stuff right getting this bird up in the air that's what we want uh, i like the ground roll uh, for this PMDG 737 is pretty consistent. Oh, there's a little chop there, huh? What is with the choppiness? It's it's killing me here. I wonder if it's that toolbar pushback. <coughs> All right, let's get our throttles up to about 60%. That's back here, not up there. Close enough. Toga. All right, airspeed is alive. There's 80 knots. And up, up, and away. Gear coming up. There's definitely some choppiness in there. Following the uh, flight director for the moment. Trying to anyway. it yeah I hate when that uh, the vertical part of the flight director sort of just goes up and down up and down you end up chasing it quite a bit so I try not to chase it too hard <clears throat> all right we're looking pretty good maybe just a little above where the flight director wants us but not too bad there we go <clears throat> Got the flaps all the way to flaps one. My max speed is 220 right now, so. And we can go flaps up. Now let's go ahead and get the autopilot on here. There we go, track hour coming off. Get to the view that I don't mind moving around, and let's take a look at our after takeoff checklist. Uh, the gear is up, the flaps are up. We can turn the uh, auto auto brakes to the uh, off position. We can lock the landing gear. Obviously, um, landing lights are going to go off when we get above 10,000. When we get above 18,000, we uh, go to standard on the altimeter. And everything else looks good. That takes care of our after takeoff checklist. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it, it is time once again for some of that obligatory elevator music.
Alrighty folks, as you can see we're going to be on our top descent here pretty soon now. Uh, we still don't have the ATIS, I've got it tuned in in the background, so just kind of waiting on that. Uh, but we're going to get set up for the descent take care of the arrival briefing real quick because we're already about to be on the arrival as well. So we're going to put this at 8,000 feet for the moment. Remember, just left click and hold and drag, and that's what is making it go so quickly. So that's definitely helpful. So 8,000 feet is where we're going to set that at the moment, and that's the only thing we need to do for now because the ATIS is already tuned in. Uh, and let me show you why that's what we need to do. I'm going to bring our uh, arrival briefing in over here. Now if the ATIS starts playing in the background, uh, then I'll go quiet and we'll listen to the ATIS and then we'll go from there. So uh, we're uh, almost here to Fred. We do have a lot of altitude restraints on this particular arrival. It is the uh, Thorn 3 RNAV arrival. Uh, so at or below to uh, flight level 290 at uh, Q-tip. And then uh, Vilma, and then at or above 240 at Drago, at or above 210 at Dew, at or below, two th or, I'm sorry, flight level 210, at or below flight level 200 at Denari or 20,000 feet. Then at 16,000 feet, excuse me, another hiccup there, at 16,000 feet at Aria, Aria, between 15 and 14 at Yahtzee, at 13 at Iron, at or below 11 at Thorn. Uh, at 10,000 at Buffoon, at 10,000 at Circus, and then at 8,000 at Ned. And a lot of this has to do with terrain clearance and so on. Uh, ATIS is 134.5. So let's take a look over here now. Uh, and let me just get things set up on this other screen. So 134.5, that's what we should be at. There we are, 134.5 on the ATIS. And then if we want to look at our uh, flight uh, or altitude restrictions, so Q-tip at or below 290 or zero. There you go, that's what the B means, at or below. And A means at or above. So at Drago, it's 240 at or above. At Do it's 210 at or above. And you want to make sure these are programmed into the FMC so that when it goes on to the descent it, it manages it for you otherwise um, you know you're having to manage your own altitudes by changing the altitude on here constantly and uh, yeah that's what you do in the real world though uh, to a certain extent I think right so somebody who flies airlines in the real world who's on here I know we got a few of them AJ for example um, when you're flying uh, an arrival like this uh, do you always have to change the altitude manually or can you allow the FMC to control it because you're already approved for the arrival? That's the question. Uh, either way, so that's our arrival briefing and we're set up for the descent. We'll be on top of descent here shortly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break away. The ATIS is tuned in. When the ATIS comes back on, I'm going to uh, select the appropriate approach, come back on here. We will brief that approach, listen to the ATIS, brief that approach, and then we can go fly it. So I'll see you back here momentarily. Okay, so uh, I literally was actually just coming on to say, hey, I haven't heard the ATIS yet, so I'm not sure what we're... <laughs> well, I knew what we were going to do, but I, I just hadn't heard the ATIS. That was actually the first playing of it. it just happened to come on right after I started uh, the recording here. So that works out fantastic. Uh, let me show you the planned approach then. So we're going to be taking the ILS Runway 8Z uh, approach. I would really like to fly the... Uh, four stacks visual uh, approach to runway 15 but I don't know if the visual reference is there the four stacks so I'm gonna have to fly that one day and see some of you may be familiar with that anyway let's take a look at our ILS uh, Zulu approach for runway 8 we've already listed the ATIS approach on 34.2 Burbank Tower on 18.7 ground on 23.9 localizer frequency 109.5 with the final approach course is 79 degrees uh, glide slope intercept is at bud at 2753 feet Decision altitude is 348 feet. Airport elevation is 778 feet with a touchdown zone elevation of 727 feet. Missed approach procedure is climb to 1300 feet, then a climbing right turn to 4600 on heading 210 and inbound on the VTU or the Ventura VOR. 
086 degree radial to the Ventura VOR and then hold. Missed approach requires a minimum climb gradient of 340 feet per nautical mile. That's because there's a mountain right here uh, <laughs> to 2,520 feet. If unable to meet climb gradient, then you have to use a different uh, approach chart. We should have no problem meeting that climb gradient. You can see what that missed approach looks like right here so we want to be at uh, basically we're shooting for 3,000 feet now we're gonna be on vectors coming down this way we're gonna stick with the vectors and try to come in here at tokes at our initial approach fix so with that being our approach briefing uh, let's take a look at uh, let me just once again set all this up over here let's take a look at what that looks like in the FMC here no idea why it's zoomed in like that it does that every once in a while departure arrival arrival it's the ILS Zulu 08 uh, and we are not transitioning at any of those um, we could say VTU but we're not going uh, actually tokes tokes is where we want to transition so let's put that in there now what I want to make sure of is that that's yeah I want to keep my vectors so execute that so we'll go on vectors and let me just show you what that looks like here get to a better view um, that view is not going to work for the moment. Let's put this on the plan page. Let me just show you what that looks like. That's the wrong direction there, buddy. Okay, so on to the plan page here then. Zoom this in a little bit. Come on. There we go. These are like a little touchy, aren't they? Okay, and then stepping through. So there's our vectors, right? And that's this is our vector line right here. 253. We actually need to bring it over to 259, which we'll do that manually up here. Uh, and then it'll be to tokes and then on in from there. So uh, the, 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 the deal here is we want to make sure our altitudes are set right here. But the uh, glide slope intercept is actually 2753. So we're good there. We're just going to set it to 2700 feet. And I think uh, we'll just go with that. That'll work for me. Now we also need to tune this into the nav radio back here. So we'll come back here real quick. And we are looking for uh, 109.5. So let's put this at 0.5. There we go. And then this one to 109. And then if you want the uh, dual, you got to do both of them. Uh, that was 0.5 there, buddy. Uh, 109.5 on both sides. And then we can adjust our altitude here. Um, so I want to hold 8,000 feet. It doesn't give me an altitude for tokes. Um, but it does give me an altitude for Silex. So on here it's got 4460. I'm okay with that. Um, we still haven't gotten to the point where we started that that sort of downwind, right? Get up there. Uh, so you can see it's it's 253 there. We're gonna actually want it at 259. You'll see what I'm talking about here as we come up on it. Uh, so 259, I believe, should or is it 249? No, it should be 259, should put us uh, on a parallel downwind. So we'll let it get a little distance out there, uh, and then we should be good to go. I need to get the landing lights on since we are below 10,000 feet. That's what happens when you're not paying attention to everything. But our speed looks good. We're going to hold that for a little while, uh, and then we'll start getting configured um, as we come around and line up with Toke. So all of that being said, that takes care of all of our approach briefing and setup. There's no reason for you to sit here and stare at the screen. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, when we get uh, get ready to make that turn towards Tokes, uh, then we'll come back on here and finish up this flight. Alrighty folks, uh, Tokes was a little further out than I realized, uh, but we're getting close to making the turn here. Um, you'd be glad that I broke away for a couple minutes because it's been like almost 10 minutes <laughs> just flying out towards totes. Um, mentioned before there's a couple ways to do this you could uh, use the heading mode to do it you can just change it in the uh, legs page here uh, we're gonna do a little bit of both if you happen to bypass the waypoint uh, and you're not sure where it is if you click on center here that puts the aircraft in the center of the compass rows and you can see waypoints after you pass them uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our turn here manually just like that and we're just going to turn it until it's uh, pointed generally towards tokes and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch it down here just like that execute that and then we can go to LNAV and now it's not fighting to make that turn and it's going to finish the descent down to tokes now because tokes is pretty far out uh, what I'm going to do here is 
Uh, just continue the descent. I'm going to hold 240 knots probably until we get uh, pretty close to Silex. Because from Silex to the um, uh, Glide Slope Intercept is uh, 6 miles, it looks like. I did go ahead and choose our approach in here. It, Burbank has uh, pretty short runways. I don't know if you know that, uh, but runway 8 is actually 5,802 feet. Uh, okay. Just. <laughs> that's just. Uh, and that would pop up in a video, wouldn't it? And my bandwidth is not too low because I have gigabyte internet. But yeah, who cares about that, right? Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we'll see how it goes on the flight in here. Uh, anyway, so it's a short runway, 5,802 feet. So, uh, yeah, we got to put her down and put her down quick. And so we probably won't grease the landing in here, but who knows, you know, sometimes you do it just right. But either way, um, like I said, we're going to hold this. Uh, if there's too much silence in here, then um, maybe I'll fast forward it a little or something like that. But we're not going to quite start configuring for... Uh, landing until we get a little closer to Silex here because we're still so you can see we bypassed hoax just a little bit I waited maybe a little too long to make that turn uh, let me go ahead and get to a proper view here and get the track IR on probably a little jump here there we go and then let me just uh, center that up for you all right and so we're coming around uh, obviously we're tracking on the LNAV we can go ahead and arm uh, the localizer now it's probably gonna grab it right away and there we go, grabbed it right away. So arm the approach now. You'll see that glide slope shows up down here in white. That means that it's armed, but it hasn't grabbed it yet. Um, just double check, 109.5, 109.5. Those are the uh, frequencies that are active right now. And so we're good to go on both of those. You can see we do have quite a good bit of terrain right below us. Pretty good stuff. Beautiful view. Look at that view, it's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, let's see, we got uh, five miles to Silex. Let's go ahead and bring in that first setting of flaps now. That's going to automatically reduce our speed. There you go. You see it going to 201. Staying on BNAV Pass, so I like that. Uh, and then 181 is what the uh, FMC speed goes to. So from Silex to Bud is six miles, and then it's from Glide Slope Intercept on in, it's still 5.2 nautical miles. So even from Silex, we got 11 miles to go, so it's, it's definitely uh, a pretty long approach. I'm sure it has to do with this weather, and these clouds are probably the reason that the uh, runway 15 visual approach is not being authorized at the moment, despite the wind. But the wind is light anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, let's go and bring in bring in flaps two now. It shouldn't really change our speed anyway. And so we're looking for 129 as our landing speed. We don't really need drag. I don't need it to slow down all that fast. Uh, 129 is our landing speed, so we want our approach speed to be about 134. Give or take just a little bit. See, we didn't need drag. Computer doesn't know what it's talking about. <laughs> we are going to use max auto brakes on this. And we're probably going to need them. It is a very short runway. You're going to see it as we come in. And I do have an add-on scenery for this. I'm going to try to remember to put the uh, link to that in the description for the video down below. I don't know why my, my camera keeps sort of getting off-center. You notice that? I must be moving it around and not realizing it. Because, like, when you center it up with track IR, so that's sort of where my head sits in the center. Right? And so now it looks like it's off-center the other way a little bit. You see that? <laughs> good enough good enough for government work I always say let's go ahead and bring in flaps 5 now we're going to be at the uh, glide slope intercept here shortly coming up on bud 3.7 nautical miles and with the uh, flaps going to 5 let's go ahead and drop the landing gear that's also going to help slow us down so we don't have to fight with it and we got gear down and 3 green Take it to flaps 10 now. Remember, we are going to do full flaps Traffic. on this. Traffic. Yeah, it's off scale, number one, and number two, it's uh, AI traffic that just does the dumbest things on the planet. So, next setting of flaps coming in, flaps 15. 
that puts us at 149 we want to be at 134 is our final approach speed there's the glide slope intercept right there just a little bit before bud which makes sense considering the glide slope intercept is 27 and change what was it 2753 and we're at 3000 so it makes sense that we would intercept it a little early let's go to flaps 25 you can see that it uh, gave us control of the speed so we're going to go ahead and bring that down to uh, 140 that's the uh, minimum maneuvering speed for flaps 25 we are on the approach at this point and we can't see the runway because there's a cloud between us and the runway so flaps 30 and we'll bring this down to 134 there we go and our go around altitude was 4,600 feet. So we'll put this at 4,600. There we go. And let's go flaps full. Give her just a moment to settle here. Everything's looking good. We're on the glide slope. We're on the localizer. Now we can take the auto throttles off. And. Uh, just watch the speed there. We just want it to come to 134 right there. There we go. Just kind of hold that. You can see the mountains very close to us there. Uh, I still don't have a visual on the runway, so I'm just letting the autopilot do the flying for the moment. And we'll just continue that until. Uh, until we have a visual on the runway. So they said 10, 10 miles visibility. Uh, we are three miles from the runway and I can't see it right now. I can just make out the lights. I don't know if you guys can. Right there's the runway light. So, so much for 10 nautical miles of visibility, right? Alrighty, here we go. We'll take the autopilot off here momentarily. I just want to have a little bit clearer visibility. That is not even close to 10 nautical miles visibility. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's barely three barely three so that would explain why we don't have access to the uh, visual approach for runway 15 right okay autopilot coming off my aircraft wanted to try and climb on me there looking good I don't know why it wants to climb the second I take the autopilot off now we're a little high there we go if you've never landed at Burbank in the real world, it's fun. Drift a little. There we go. We should be good right there. Auto brakes.
is 80 knots. Oops. I flipped off the reverse thrusters before actually uh, pulling the throttles back. That's why there was that quick beep right there. I've done that once or twice. The altimeter is clearly wrong. Uh, it's 29 or 9 or 6, so, but it could have changed in the short amount of time. Now, I've flown in here on Southwest in the real world before, and uh, last time I flew in here, we literally went right down to the end uh, and parked right there. Uh, they've got cargo and stuff over here. I'm not sure that's accurate, but uh, we are going to peel off right here. Let's go ahead and get the uh, taxi lights on. Wrong way. Come on. There we go. Landing lights coming off. Uh, slow this down just a wee little bit. We'll taxi back here a little bit. Uh, this terminal's not. This terminal's definitely not accurate. Anybody who knows Burbank knows that it's not um, not not bad mouth in the scenery. Just saying, this this is definitely not accurate as far as this terminal is concerned, because these all look like cargo spots almost. That's kind of crazy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take taxi light off because we're gonna pull in here in just a sec and get the APU started here. And we don't even need to worry about uh, breaking away, do we? And we're gonna park it right there, right where that uh, taxi edgeway light is you see that right there <laughs> a3 for us right next to the taxi edgeway light bring it in nice and easy here let's go ahead and uh, get those flaps coming up i don't even think i did the spoilers yet flaps coming all the way up there we go should have probably done that as soon as we uh we're pulling off the runway this should be about good right here track hire coming off little tiny jump no jump at all i lied Parking brake coming on. <laughs> it just—it almost looks like that, like this is lit up. It's not. It's the sunlight. But I thought that was kind of funny. There's the flaps coming the rest of the way up. Uh, uh, auto brakes to off. And what else we got here? Uh, is the APU up and running? The APU is up and running. Let's go on to the APU bus. There we go. Go on to the APU bleed. We can turn these off. Now we can let's shut off the engines. Uh, it's kind of you got to go down to this view to do it. There we go. There we go. Engines are getting shut down. There is no. Uh, yeah, see, it looks like a cargo area, but this is not. A, this is the terminal. <laughs> Either way, that's fine. So obviously, we'd start off loading passengers and all of that. Um, okay, so let's look at our shutdown checklist really quick. Uh, brakes are on, start levers are in the cutoff position, ground power, we don't have it right now. We're going to stay on the APU to finish out this flight. Uh, we do need to get fuel pumps off up here. Um, because we're not on ground power, we'll leave that fuel pump on. We can turn uh, the probe heat off. We're not going to go to complete cold and dark here. Uh, that looks good there. I'm good with all that. Oh, you know what? I never turned those off continuous ignition after we took off. So we flew all the way out here with them on continuous ignition. Well done, sir. Well done. Okay, let's get that up. Uh, that one, I believe. I always forget which lights are which in this aircraft. Uh, but that pretty much takes care of shutting down the aircraft. We'd be offloading passengers and baggage at this point in time. And that means... That's going to wrap it up for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I do appreciate you joining me for the flight. Now, the scenery is not too bad, uh, but this is a terminal, not a cargo area. So, um, I mean, I guess they could have all of these these uh, little cargo baggage things out of here, but this is, this is the passenger terminal. But either way, that's fine. Uh, the scenery overall looks pretty good. It was a decent landing. Uh, I didn't look at the landing rate. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm looking right now, and uh, my uh, Sim Toolkit Pro, for whatever reason, decided we never did the flight. <laughs> that sounds about right. But either way, I had a good time. It was a quick little flight this morning. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I most certainly did. If you like the content, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Smash on that subscribe button down there if you think that I've earned it. And, um... You know, the more that you guys uh, give these videos thumbs up and what have you, uh, the more they pop up in the algorithm for YouTube. So that's very helpful for me. Um, and let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see for content. You know, if there's things you'd like to see done differently or whatever, I would love it if you guys would let me know. Uh, once again, I do appreciate you joining me for this flight. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. That's it. That's all and no more, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all.
and have an absolutely fantastic day.